Okay. Uh, so you've had um, a couple of lectures on music fundamentals, uh, and um, everybody saw the videos. Everybody got okay, and and you have the uh, presentations correct. And you should have already started watching the the movies, uh, the documentary, right? How music works, and the first one is melody. But before I get into that, I want to look at the study guide. Did we go over the study guide the other day? Yes, no? Okay. So let's do that. On your study guides, and this goes for the, the whole course, you're going to have multiple parts, uh, um, and generally two parts. Uh, the first part... Uh, on this one is uh, terms from the lecture. You're always going to have terms from the lecture and the reading. But in this particular study guide, there was also uh, this video. This is uh, one of the few videos that we're going to watch during the course. We, we've got a few of them. And so these are the terms I told you as you watch this uh, documentary. Uh, these terms will show up on the screen, right? And so it's, uh, these are the ones that I want you to know. So as you watch the, the videos, make sure you get the gist of these terms, understand what they mean. We're going to go over a little, some of them today. And I'm going to just uh, give you a, kind of a gloss over, but you need to make sure you get the details as you watch them, okay? And so there, the videos are in four parts, melody, rhythm, harmony, and bass. And each of them is like in four or five parts because, well, you know, YouTube only lasts for about five or ten minutes. And if you got a program longer than that, you know, it breaks it up. And so you'll have that. Then the second part, or uh, another part of your study guide, every study guide you're going to have, the lectures and the reading. So out of the textbook... And the introduction and chapter one, you have all these terms. And I want you to go through and find these in the reading, okay, in, chapter, in the introduction to chapter one. And make sure you understand the context in which the author is talking about them. Because you might know some of these terms. Uh, for example, Jim Crow. What is Jim Crow? Anybody ever heard that term before, or that name? What is Jim Crow? Who is Jim Crow? Nobody knows. Okay, well, that's part of what I want you to go through. You might have heard it and may think you know something about it because it had, you heard the term Jim Crow laws, the segregation laws of the South, you know, post-bellum, but... Where did that name come from? Who was he? That's what I want you to find out. Okay, Why it got its nickname, Jim Crow. Who was Jim Crow? Well, why do they nickname those laws Jim Crow? What was it about that? Okay, Again, history is learning or getting the joke. Remember I mentioned that the other day in the lecture that the study of any kind of history is liken, I liken it to getting the joke. Something had happened before you got to the party, so to speak. And uh, everybody else understands, but you know you need to be brought up to speed on it. And so there's a lot of things in life that happened before you were born and before you started becoming you know, uh, cerebrally aware in your knowledge of what things are. So this is one of those things. So when, again, the point is, as you go through the text, make sure you understand in what context the author is talking about them, okay? You might know some definitions. It's not enough just to know the definition. What's the author talking about? And last, on every study guide, you're going to have a list of songs. And your task is to listen to all these uh, and be able to identify them when you hear them. Because on the test, you will, uh, I'll play... 
about a 10, 15 second segment of the song, and you're going to have to be able to identify it. And I want you to know, of course, the name of the song and the artist or the group that recorded the song, that released it. Okay? Now, there's a, a secondary task in all of this. Um, you ever heard uh, the terms uh, specified task and implied task? Anyone ever use that, that, those two t phrases with you? You ever heard that? A specific, I'll give you an example. A specified task is like your mom tells you, clean the bathroom. Okay? But there are a lot of implied tasks. And among them, uh, you know, get rags, make sure you clean up after yourself, clean the toilet, get the back to, and clean the tub, get the chemical with the cleaners, make sure you clean up after yourself, do the mirror, all these things, right? The general task is to, the specified task is to clean the bathroom. But you have a lot of implied tasks that you have to do to accomplish that one task, right? So, in this course, I want you to consider that in this particular part. And just like I was mentioning, it's, it's not enough to know the definition of a term. You need to understand the context in which it's being used. So, of course, the implied task is to read around and make sure you understand all those other things that are happening. Um, just the, this is a B section? A group or B group? A group? Okay. So, uh, I think we talked about um, you know, why are you going to college in the first place and what makes college students you know, worth their salt. And part of it is, yes, you've gone to college and you've acquired all this great knowledge, right? You should have it at your, your command, at your fingertips. But I think just as much, just as important, or maybe bigger than that, is you have practiced after year, after year, after year, after year, researching. In every course, including this, and I'm sure there are going to be a lot of terms that you don't know. I already hit you with a couple of them, and some of them here today. And maybe you're not sure if you know what you need to know about it, right? So among the things you need to always have with you is a dictionary. Because sometimes, and we're going to take a, a look at some of the introduction uh, next lecture. Uh, some of this, it's college level stuff. It's, college, it's, it's a college textbook, so there's a uh, uh, some challenges in reading all this stuff. Uh, just like eating an elephant, how do you do that? One bite at a time. So you need to make sure you understand the, all the words and all the terms that the author is using when he's talking about these different things. Using your cell phone, please put it up. Or find somewhere else to go. Um, you, you need to have that second reference with you. And I'm sure in your other classes, I mean, science or chemistry, or whatever it is, other classes you're taking, you have to use a secondary resource to figure out, to be able to understand this first one, right? And after years and years of doing that, you know, that's what really makes a college student, you know, something good. Because who would I rather hire to manage my business? Somebody who knows how to do research or somebody who has no idea? You know, somebody who understands all the problems aren't, all the, you got a lot of problems and your job is to solve problems, but all the answers are not just right there in front of you. You got to dig for them. Okay? So just understand that and use that practice in your studying in this as well. So back to implied uh, task. I've picked 30 songs. And we'll listen to another 30 out of the 50s in the next section of the course. Um, but there were a lot more than 60 songs in the 50s, in the teen years of the 50s. So there's a, this is just a representation of it. And many of these artists, like Chuck Berry and Elvis, have a lot of hits. So it's not enough for you to just listen to one song by any of these artists and understand uh, to be able to really understand what they contributed to, you know, American music. Uh, take advantage of the things that 
uh, YouTube offers because just about every time you look at something, right, there's always two or three more selections from that artist or maybe other like artists. So uh, as you listen to these, yes, you need to know these for the test. I take the time to listen to some of these other artists that you might not be familiar with. And I guarantee you, you're going to stumble across more than one artist and go, wow, I didn't know, I've heard that song before. I didn't know it was this guy. Bobby Cochran or the Flyers or Fat Stone. They have many of these. I only picked one, you know, to represent them. The second part is that in the next test, starting the next test, we're going to be talking about subgenres. What is a genre? Anyone ever heard that term before? Okay, good. It's a style. And in music, we, that's exactly what we're talking about is a style of music. And this whole course is devoted to the genre of rock and roll, right? But there are many subgenres. How many styles of rock and roll can you tell me? I'm sure everybody can come up with one. We're going to talk about it in more detail in another class. What other subgenres can you think of? Bar rock. <clears throat> Bar rock. What else? Yeah. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. you said classic rock. Classic rock. Okay, well, it's classic rock now. Back in the 70s, it was, it was hard rock. But what else? Heavy metal, punk rock, right? rap came along, we'll talk about soul, uh, disco, country rock, southern rock, all these things. They're just a bunch of them. Right? Um, metal, uh, speed rock, jazz rock, art rock, we'll get into talking about all those. My point is, in, in this next module, in this next section of the tap of the course, we're going to start looking at subgenres. So, uh, in particular, the next section from here on, from there on out, be considering what subgenre am I listening to? What makes Billy Joel's music different than Steve Miller's music or Boston or? Chubby Checker, you know what? What are these different subgenres? What what's what do they have in common? Who are other artists in these subgenres? Okay, so it's uh, that's the implied task is to really understand what you're listing and under be able to fold all these songs under the the umbrella of this course, the history of rock and roll. The whole point is for you to be able to know. Where these things fit in history and time, right? So that's that's the implied task. I'll give you a specified task of listening to these. And just by virtue of understanding they're from the 50s, you'll be able to identify, okay, from now on, when I hear that song, okay, that's a 50s song. And there's some other things we're going to talk about later on, like um, the standard of the industry in recording. Why do all those 50 songs kind of sound different than the later 60s and the 80s, you know? The quality of the recording, they all sound kind of nasally about it, you know, that kind of thing. We'll, we'll talk about that because of technology. So we're going to examine several aspects of it. Then also some characteristics, um, more in depth in the next section. But my point is, understand that there are uh, I'm giving you a specified task with the implied task with the terms, understand the context, with the listening, you know, listen to other things by that artist. And you start exploring a little bit. It doesn't take you much. You don't have to listen to the whole song. You have to listen to the whole album. Just, oh, okay, that was that guy. And, oh, he did that song too. That's what I hope for you is to start grouping all these things and understand who these artists are and put them in uh, proper perspective. Okay. Any questions about the study guides? Yeah. 
You don't have to memorize them. Just be able to recognize them when you hear them. You know, I mean, you've probably heard, I guarantee you've, all y'all have heard at least half of these songs before. In a commercial, in a movie, you just didn't know who they were. Now I want you to learn who they were. And as you're listening to them, just, you know, uh, in your car, a lot of cars now have the little feature on it that'll show the name of the song and the artist, you know, so that's a really cool thing to have. Um, or as you're listening to it, just, you know, look. Yeah. Be able to recognize it when you hear it. Okay? Any other questions? That's a good one. Okay, let's talk about melody. And the um, first video that was um, found here. Melody talks about many aspects of it. So let's go through it a little bit. So uh, for those of you who have already watched, great. You'll start seeing what, how to watch this. And for those of you who still have some to catch up, it would benefit too. Too many to choose from. I don't know which one. We have rhythm, harmony, and bass. We'll start with music's soul. 